So we continue to inform you about the course of military campaigns in Ukraine. The Ukrainian attack on Kherson is already in full swing, but it's not what we imagine it to be. The Ukrainian military started an interesting game with their opponent. Now we will tell you about what tactics the Ukrainian military chose and what trap they prepare for the Russians. Perhaps you already know that Russia has created a military foothold for itself on the right bank of the Dnieper. They needed this foothold for a possible offensive in the future. But now it is clear that they have fallen into a trap. Having destroyed the bridges in Kherson, the Ukrainians actually surrounded the Russian troops on the right bank of the Dnieper river. Behind the Russians is a large river with a strong current. It is not easy to overcome, and ahead of them Ukrainian artillery. Ukraine took under fire control the entire Russian grouping on the right bank. With the help of high-precision strikes by HIMARS and other artillery, the Ukrainians are destroying the command posts and strongholds of the Russians. The Ukrainians are hitting Russian positions, clusters of equipment and ammunition depots. The Russians fire back frantically, delivering chaotic counter-strikes, but very soon they will run out of ammunition. The fate of this foothold should be decided by the end of August or in September. If Russia doesn't find a way to supply its troops with a sufficient number of shells, they will be forced to leave Kherson. Now the Russians are not able to deliver enough ammunition to the front line because of the destroyed bridges. Currently they are trying to supply their troops with boat crossings and pontoon bridges. But the capacity of the ferry crossing is very small, and pontoon bridges are very vulnerable. One high mars projectile can break a pontoon bridge in two, then the current carries it away. They still have some stockpiles of shells scattered throughout the area, but the Ukrainian army hunts them down and systematically destroys them. Just yesterday, 12 Russian ammunition depots were destroyed. Time is working against the Russians. Every day brings the victory of Ukraine closer. It is important to understand that the offensive of the Ukrainian troops will not be the same as we are used to seeing it in films, when thousands of soldiers and tanks go to the enemy in a frontal attack. This is what the Russians do, which is why they suffer such heavy losses. They fight according to the rules of the Second World War. If you remember history, then you probably know how Soviet generals fought at that time. They valued military equipment more than their soldiers. If they had to overcome the minefields, and they gave the order to the soldiers to advance, sacrificing thousands of lives. And they took care of the tanks and armored vehicles. Since then, little has changed in Russia's military doctrine. People are just consumables for them. Ukraine is waging a modern war according to NATO standards. Thanks to high-precision artillery, the Ukrainians are destroying the Russians remotely. And when the Russian troops are left without the means to resist, only then will the Ukrainian military move forward and carry out a sweep operation. Thanks to accurate artillery, the Ukrainians are destroying the entire structure of the Russian defense. Ukrainian gunners treat war as hard work at a factory. They work from morning to night. They receive the coordinates of the target, go to the positions, fire the required number of shells at the targets and drive to the next target. The main task is to beat the enemy to such an extent that he will be unable to resist. The very first thing to do is to destroy the stocks of shells from the Russians. Ukrainian intelligence struck them down with the help of satellites and drones. Yes, Ukraine doesn't have its own satellites, but they use American satellites. The gunners then destroy command posts and communications. Without this, Russian soldiers would be left without control. And such soldiers will be demoralized and prone to flee or they will be forced to surrender. Ukraine is also hunting for Russian air defenses, so that Ukrainian aircraft can freely strike Russian positions. And the Dnieper river helps the Ukrainians in the offensive. Thanks to the river, the Ukrainians were able to create a trap for Russia on the right bank. The river prevents the Russians from supplying their troops with new forces and resources. And if the Russians are building a pontoon bridge, the Ukrainians can immediately destroy it with an accurate hit. Other ways to transport resources across the river are not very effective. Yes, they are capable of supplying the Russians with some ammunition, but that will not be enough. And over time, an acute shortage of ammunition will make itself felt with the strong pressure of the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian offensive infuriates Putin. 
Russia has ceased to dictate the agenda and is forced to respond to Ukraine's actions. See how Ukraine again breaks his plans. When it became clear that Ukraine was going to return her son under its control, Putin ordered to protect it at all costs. He cannot afford to lose such a large piece of land. This will look like a clear defeat and could lead to very bad political consequences within Russia. Over the past few days, the Russians have begun moving additional troops into Kherson, withdrawing them from the Donetsk region. I remind you that for a long time the Donbass remained the main strategic direction for the Russian army. Their best troops were there. Russia intended to capture the entire Donetsk region. This was announced as the main goal of Putin's entire military operation. But now Putin is forced to respond to the Ukrainian offensive and deploys his best landing troops to Kherson. Intelligence of Ukraine recorded the transfer of additional, no less than 15 battalion tactical groups and about 1,000 pieces of military equipment. They crossed to the right bank of Kherson through the dam in Nova Kahovka. The Ukrainians have not yet destroyed it. And perhaps therein lies the trap. Look! Ukraine launched an offensive and cut off the main bridges near Kherson, leaving one bridge at Nova Kahovka. Thus, Ukraine gave the Russians two choices. First choice – leave Kherson and the entire right bank of the Dnieper leaving through the dam in Nova Kahovka. This would suit the Ukrainians quite well. The second choice – to strengthen your military grouping on the right bank, transferring more troops and more military equipment there. And it also plays right into the hands of the Ukrainians. The more military equipment enters the right bank, the less it will be on other sectors of the battlefront. After that, Ukraine will destroy the bridge over the dam in Novokahovka and begin to grind the entire Russian front here. It may take a whole month or more, but the Russians have almost no chance of winning this war game. The battle for Kherson will end with the victory of Ukraine, it's only a matter of time. After all, any attempts by the Russians to supply their troops across the Dnieper River will be thwarted by high-precision HIMARS strikes, of which there are now almost 30 units in Ukraine. Recently, Ukraine has also received a lot of armored vehicles and anti-aircraft missile systems. All this is crucial for the attack. We are also confident that after Ukraine regains Kherson, the United States will give Ukraine Atacom's missiles with which the Ukrainians will be able to destroy the Crimean bridge and the Russian military port in Sevastopol. In other words, amazing historical events await us very soon. Be sure to watch my video about why it's so important for Ukraine to destroy the Crimean bridge.